Story recapped here. Today I'm going to show you a drama. Thriller film called The Girl with All the Gifts. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In a dystopian world taken over by a fungal disease, humankind's only hope is a group of hybrid children. They do not look like the stereotypical superheroes. They are in wheelchairs and are heavily guarded by soldiers because they crave living flesh. In a rather strange school setting, Helen Justino is responsible for educating them. Among the children is Melanie, whose intelligence is exceptional and is the one closest to Ms. Justino. The children at the army base are treated lowly by the guards. Guns are constantly being pointed at them, and the food given is very unpleasant. To say the least, they are treated like outcasts and animals. The children are being experimented on by Dr. Caroline Caldwell, who is in charge of the research for these kinds of cases. Dr. Caldwell is fond of Melanie because she is a brilliant, bright, and insightful child. From time to time, she asks Melanie to solve riddles to test her. Dr. Caldwell randomly made her pick a number between 1 to 20, she chose 13, and on the following day, on her way to the classroom, Melanie noticed that one of her classmates, Kenny, is absent. What made her suspicious is that Kenny is numbered as 13. She brought this to Ms. Justino's attention, but the teacher brushes the subject off, little did they know, Kenny is being experimented. On that same day, Ms. Justino assigned the class to write their own story. Melanie volunteered to read her story out loud to the class. Her story is about a mother and a child. Her story deeply touches Ms. Justino that she touches Melanie on the head in a caring way. Lacking motherly care, Melanie feels comforted by Ms. Justino's simple act of affection. The guards see the teacher caress the student, and they come into the room furiously. Sergeant A. Parks, the leader of the soldiers, shouts at Ms. Justino and reminds her that physical touch can trigger these children's craving for human flesh. Sergeant Parks proceeds to show Ms. Justino what will happen if she ever does it again. He comes toward one of the children, spits on his hand, and lets him sniff it. In just a matter of seconds, the boy turns frantic as he reaches out for the sergeant. The boy's action also caused other students to act the same way, almost like they want to attack Sergeant Parks. Ms. Justino is left devastated as the class ended because she feels like it is her fault. After the class, Melanie is escorted to her cell by the guards, and Sergeant Parks walks by. Melanie tells the sergeant that Ms. Justino likes her best, and the teacher would rather touch her than him. Sergeant Parks became angry and left her tied to her wheelchair for the whole night. Ms. Justino walks by Melanie's cell and found her still tied to her wheelchair. Out of kindness, she unties her from the chair. But Melanie starts acting frantic and even tells her, teacher that she smells nice. Fighting the urge to attack her, Melanie shouts at Ms. Justino to get out of her cell. She came out safely but little did she know that Dr. Caldwell found out about her visit. Dr. Caldwell initiated a conversation with Melanie and, once again, made her pick a number. Melanie sensed the pattern and chose four, which is the number assigned to her. Dr. Caldwell fell silent and walked away. One day, instead of being escorted to her classroom, Melanie is brought outside. The camp is now attacked by the hungries or the ones infected by the highly contagious fungal disease. Melanie is brought to Dr. Caldwell's lab for medical procedures, but it goes wrong as the hungries overrun the camp. One of the nurses is attacked. Dr. Caldwell runs for her life, leaving Melanie alone in the lab. She manages to escape by using a scalpel to set herself free. Outside is complete chaos. To get to Ms. Justino, Melanie attacks two soldiers, infecting them. Melanie fell unconscious, and Ms. Justino carried her to board an escaping truck with Sergeant Parks, Dr. Caldwell, and two other soldiers, Gallagher and Dylan. Melanie is tied, and they use a restraint mask to prevent her from biting others while traveling. When they stop for water, a group of hungries proceed to attack, and Dylan is infected, leaving Sergeant Parks no choice but to shoot him. They all reach London by foot, and they pass through a swarm of dormant hungries by using a gel that conceals their smell. They end up in an abandoned hospital to find shelter for the night. Dr. Caldwell explains that second-generation hungries, like Melanie, were discovered after newborns killed their infected mothers from the inside by burrowing the womb. The following day, their shelter is surrounded by hungries, and Melanie volunteers to go outside and look for a way to get them out of the building. As a second-generation hungry, she is completely ignored by the hungries. On her walk, Melanie finds a stray cat, eats it. This instantly satisfies her hunger and craving for blood. She then continues to explore abandoned houses. In one of the houses, she found a stray dog and uses it to catch the hungry's attention, making it safe enough for the group to escape from the building. Melanie is given a walkie-talkie to monitor the area while communicating with the group. As they advance and walk through the city, 
they encounter a piled tower with infected bodies, which encircles the building. The amount of infection has taken over the building with seed pods that could release airborne contamination. The group takes shelter in an abandoned mobile lab. After some time, Melanie feels hungry and is once again set free outside by the group. Gallagher, who is also in search of food, ventures around the city. Melanie comes across a group of uninfected but feral children, and she observes them from a distance. Back in the lab, Dr. Caldwell is in great pain as she fights her inflammatory sepsis, a blood poisoning she got from cuts on her hand. Dr. Caldwell persuades Ms. Justino to sacrifice Melanie to synthesize a vaccine that would end the fungal disease. The group of children has caught Gallagher's scent, and in an attempt to save him from danger, Melanie helps the group track him by searching for him around the city. It's too late since the group of children found him first, and he ends up being eaten by them. The group arrived at the place where Gallagher is killed. They discovered his helpless body, all devoured. The rest of them are also surrounded by the feral children. But Melanie fights their leader and, brutally kills him with a bat, shooing the rest of them away. Her bravery makes way for the group to escape and find their way back to the lab. Upon arriving, Dr. Caldwell uses a gas tank to make Melanie, Ms. Justino, and Sergeant Parks unconscious. In this way, she can freely dissect Melanie's body. As she struggles to do the procedure because of her sepsis, Melanie gains consciousness before the process starts. Dr. Caldwell explains to Melanie that she can make a cure out of her and that it is a way to save Ms. Justino, who is very close to Melanie's heart. Dr. Caldwell guilts Melanie into sacrificing her own life. She assures the little girl that it will not hurt, and she is doing Ms. Justino a great favor. Melanie refused. She managed to escape, and Dr. Caldwell followed her, but she ended up being eaten by a group of feral children. Melanie sets fire to the seed pods surrounding the tall tower. Because of the heat, spores and seeds are released into the air. These spores could cause humans to turn into hungries. Melanie runs into Sergeant Parks, who left the lab in search of Ms. Justino. Melanie admitted that she has opened the pods and apologized for it. Sergeant Parks has been infected by the spores released into the air and begs Melanie to take his gun and shoot him because he does not want to turn into a hungry. Melanie obeys him and shoots. Back in the lab, secured by the airtight windows, Ms. Justino watched as the spores fall. She watches Melanie from the sealed door and they look at each other longingly. Ms. Justino settles and is confined in the mobile lab as the outside environment is highly lethal except for the second generation hungries. She continues to educate Melanie and the rest of the feral children with a sealed door dividing her from the rest of them. Melanie then continues to lead the group of feral children, even teaching them to speak. All of them have accepted this new reality in this compromised world that they are forced to live in. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.